Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the second episode of the Joystick Podcast. I am your host, Tony. And I'm Dan. And, uh, wow, thank you so much for the support on the last podcast we did. We knew it would be good, but we didn't know it would be that good. <laughs> ah, well, <laughs> yeah. So, um, this time around, are we going to kick off with what we're kicking off with, Tony? We're kicking off with Black Ops 4, um, because it's a major game, it's coming out, um, and people want to talk about it. Um, before we do that, I want to give a shout out to one person, and that is um, a friend of ours called Bill. As you can see, our thumbnail for the podcast is absolutely smashing, um, and I just, yeah. I just want to give a big shout out to Bill for, for doing that for us. He's, he's doing our banner as well, so big props to him. Um, he's a good mate of Dan's, so yes, yes. there's a shout out, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Black Ops. Oh, sorry, back on, back on the story. So uh, Black Ops Four is obviously coming around. It's coming out in probably November, as every Call of Duty does. There's some hype about it. Um, Dan has some criticisms towards the game because he does. Um, Dan, do you want to kick it off with the criticism? Let's start bad. Okay, we'll start bad and we'll end on a high note. So I'm, well, there's, there's, there's um, one major criticism that I have, and I'm guessing most of you out there who, you know, might have a similar criticism, and that's about the campaign. Um, well, all the lack of potentially, which is still a bit of a grey area as it stands but if you don't know already which you probably do because it's been massive news now for about two weeks I'd say um, so the new Black Ops 4 is so so not going to be shipped with a campaign so they've changed that for the all fan favourite of a battle royale mode which does look kind of cool I'm not going to lie it does look good I mean you know we all love Fortnite and PUBG which I think I've mentioned mm -hmm. on almost every video now <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so it's uh, it's going to be quite you know going to be quite popular for that as well as obviously the multiplayer campaign. I mean the reasons behind this, as they said, is that they're putting effort into the things that most people spend most time playing, which which does make sense. My only major gripe, I think, would be the fact that what I don't want to happen is is that other games go down this route. Um, you know, I'd hate to see you know things like I don't know. Battlefield games going down the route of not using campaigns or you know just think of any anything that you really enjoy that you play the online game like you know new Halo games for example on Xbox they turn around and say oh, we're not going to do campaigns anymore but I'd, I'd hate to see that you know I love playing campaign games you know co-op or solo it doesn't really make a difference to me but I do enjoy them so I'd be quite frustrated if we lost them what do you think to that tone? Yeah, definitely. Um, with Battlefield, kind of, we did that though. They kind of, instead of having a campaign, they had like operations or something on on Battlefield One, didn't they? I don't know. You still got uh, a campaign on Battlefield One, so you can still run through it's that. Not really, it's not really a campaign, is it? Like no. they said, it wasn't really a campaign. There's not really a storyline to it. You're just kind of playing for missions. Um, to me personally, no. I know. I feel like campaigns are a big thing for me for a game. If ever called you ever, I've always played the campaign first before I did online. Okay. Uh, because I, I always do that. That's that's just how I do. Um, but you can just imagine games like imagine like uh, uh, Borderlands Three, for example, which we love. Imagine that come out and they're like, yeah, yeah, there's no campaign. Just go online and play stuff and do stuff. You know. Oh yeah, that'd be brutal. <laughs> like and it's just I feel like it's the way the world's going because people are not invested in campaigns anymore. Uh, it's all about it's all about, like you said battle royale. It's all about the multiplayer oh, online experience. Well, I think I think there, there are lots of people invested in the campaigns. It's just we're just not as well like focused on because because obviously when you're playing online there's the they can they can gauge that they can monitor that can't they so they can see oh we've got 20,000 people playing our game right now or if you're uh, PUBG which was you know a couple of months ago I think maybe four or five months ago we reached over a million concurrent players you know and they, they can monitor that but they can't necessarily see us sat there at home with no internet connection smashing through their games and there's millions of us doing that so uh, it's, it's like a benchmark isn't it yeah no absolutely like <laughs> that's me saying absolutely again um, one, th one thing I don't want to happen is um, I know a lot of people um, especially um, there's generally a lot of people that don't really generally have access to the internet or something like that um, not being able to, to enjoy the game purely because it has a no campaign, one thing I'd love to see though about the Battle Royale mode is a kind of um, I don't know if you've played the other Call of Duty you obviously put bots on your game hmm. And one thing that really grinded my gears about PUBG and Fortnite is there was no entry level for new players. So when I started, when I went from Xbox gaming to PC gaming, I was like, right, I'll jump on Fortnite, have a game. I play one game and I just died as soon as I landed because I just wasn't quick enough at the keys. Yeah. Which I'm hoping they put some like entry level stuff into, you know, uh, the battle royale mode so that way yeah, you can play against 30, 40 bots. 
get used to the guns, get used to the maps, get used to the controls, get used to the whole battle royale aspect, and then jump into an online game when you when you, when you feel ready. Because it's nothing worse than jumping into a game, you're landing. Oh, I love this. This is good. Look at the graphics. Dead. <clears throat> no, true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. That is true. Um, <laughs> there's something actually I would say. Um, you know, I, I did sort of slate that a little bit. I mean, I. As we've previously established, I well, we both really like Rainbow Six Siege, and we know that obviously has no no campaign. You have got little situations and stuff, so you know it does work for a lot of games. I just I, I would hate for it to be encouraged across the massive board. And I know you know the the um, Call of Duty games, the campaigns are epic. You know people absolutely go crazy for them. I mean, you remember the ending for um, Modern Warfare Two? I mean. Oh my God! We're gonna if are we? Is this gonna be the the it for Call of Duty? We're not gonna see endings like that anymore. That's incredible, I and mean, we don't want on that, would we? Well, the difference is, isn't it? That was obviously done by Infinity Ward. Um, it is. They're, they're, supposed be, they're supposed to be remastering the game, more than two anyway. Mm. Uh, I thought that's the right thing to do because there's nothing, but there's nothing anymore that's bare bones like Modern Warfare Two was. That was to me the point, the pinnacle point for Call of Duties was Black Ops Two. Yeah, Black Ops One. Uh, it was good, not Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 2. That was <laughs> it for me. Modern Warfare 3, loved that game. best thing about that game was doing uh, duos uh, competitively. Loved it. But Modern Warfare 2 was where it's at. It was literally bare bones to the point. You know, there's no other special yeah. traits that characters have. It was to the point. Um, so that's kind of all I want to talk about, about the, the multiplayer side of the game. Obviously... Uh, um, got any more, you know, well, the interesting thing I, I was is kind of on the actual game itself. I wanted to say was, I know everyone is for and against it. There's, we've seen people argue about it on Facebook and God knows what else. You know, all the all the forums and stuff that we all jump into occasionally. We see people arguing about this point. Well, actually, what we don't know yet is of what the price for the game is. So, like you take Rainbow Six Siege, Battle Royale, um, PUBG, Fortnite. You know, they're not fifty quid. 40 quid games, they're 25 quid, 30 quid games. So if they ship this game at 30 quid, then actually I think I'd accept the fact that they don't have a campaign. But that being said, that being said, there is some speculation around campaign being a DLC. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I was reading um, a thing, um, a news post earlier, I think it's on IGN, and they said how um, the people who developed this called you kind of wanted it to be an ever, ever updating game. Maybe maybe kind of like Siege, because Siege is, what, four years old now? Uh, uh, yeah, Three, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, to be fair. Um, and the whole point of that game is that you know, they haven't really released another game like it. They just keep updating that one. Um, yeah. And that's just kind of what they do. Considering the price of the Black Ops, it's it's 50 quid. It is definitely 50 quid. Yeah, it's now. not Blizzard now, I can see it. Because obviously it's coming out right. on Blizzard um, thing as well, not on Steam. Uh, of course, yeah. Um, so it's 50 quid, which to me... For just a multiplayer game with a battle royale, it's quite the scary. only reason I would buy that is zombies, because <laughs> I like zombies. I'm a big fan of zombies. Yeah, which we'll talk, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But yeah, fifty quid—that's a lot of money for a game without a campaign. No, I, I but, agree. I agree. Yeah, like, they have to be do. You see, I, did, I didn't. Any smashing I, job. I didn't know that. So if um, so, that does kind of maybe swing back a little bit more towards the uh, unfavorable camp. At the moment, but who knows? It might be good. Ah, they've um, they changed release date as well. It's not actually November. It's coming out October the twelfth. October the twelfth, oh, which well, is there you go. weird. And obviously, there is a deluxe edition to this game you can buy, and it comes with COD points, which I'm guessing is going to be used to loot box. Now, oh, the way they go down this loot box, every other Call of Duty since, oh my god, oh my god, what like Infinity War remastered, the first one remastered, I, or Black I, Ops Three. I honestly loot can't boxes, tell you. Loot boxes, loot boxes. Oh, a nightmare because it gives you guns. It gives you actual guns that give you competitive advantage in a game. All right? Yeah. Skins, I understand skins. Skins are cool, shiny stuff. Yeah. Giving someone a gun because they pay for it? No, <laughs> absolutely not. And if they do this in battle royale mode, oh, that yeah, is a perk. You can spawn with a weapon already. Yeah, well, yeah, that's going to be dead interesting. dead before it hit the ground. That's, you know. Yeah. But they, every game's going to have loot boxes nowadays purely because that's just. The easiest way for developers to make money, and I'm not gonna lie. If I had the experience to build a game, I'd probably add loot boxes because people want money. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even gonna lie. No, that's no, I, fair. everyone wants money. You can sit here and listen to this podcast and go, "Oh, well, I don't want money." You're lying. <laughs> if um, somebody come up to you and said, "I'll give you fifty bucks," you know, or "I'll give you ten bucks for every time one of these sales on this 
multi-million player based game you're like yep yeah, to commit to night, you know done deal yeah um now with that actually we want to talk maybe briefly about the battle royale mode itself so from what i understand is that they're going to be mashing together big chunks of maps and campaign levels that have been really popular over the years all the last previous three games is that right and they're going to start sticking with one big map that seems to be the impression i got yeah, so they're, they're supposed to be doing something completely different to what every other Battle Royale game does. So if you look at PUBG, obviously they have two maps now and there's a third one coming. Fortnite, you have the one map which they ever uh, evidently change all the time. Black Ops is supposed to be quite a bit different. They're supposed to have... Um, it's supposed to be, you know, like all your best maps from different Call of Duties. Um, I cannot remember off the top of my head any maps of any of the Black Ops games. <laughs> only the Modern Warfare ones, weirdly enough. But, yeah, so that's what they're, they're supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be a lot different. They're... The way they're marketing it, they're, they're saying it's going to be a battle royale game, what you people love, but it's going to be done our way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I saw things about um, them adding sort of air vehicles in, so like helicopters and stuff. That seems to be one of the big differences that we've not seen yet. Um, Kill shoots, sort of thing. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm sure it'll be great, and I'm sure all of those out there who love Call of Duty will uh, will really enjoy it. And you know, I'm quite excited for them. I mean, personally, um, I'm not a massive fan of Call of Duty games. I like the campaigns, and that's kind of <laughs> kind of the thing that I'm a little bit upset about. So, for me, I probably won't be picking this up at least on release. So, I'll probably get it eventually, though. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the other thing we need to talk about um, regarding Black Ops is going to be the zombies. Yeah. I think it is. Other than this Battle Royale mode, is going to be the next thing that sells this game to me because they're supposed to be remastering Mob of the Dead. And I have a pop final Brutus here on my computer. Mob of the Dead was the best zombies map I've ever played purely because it's an Alcatraz and I love the history of Alcatraz. Yeah. Itself. Yeah, I'm, um, I can't really comment if I'm honest. I don't. Um, well, those who don't don't know me, I don't really like wave defense games. Um, I really have any description. I've tried, I've tried zombies, I've tried a variety of others. I even I even stopped playing uh, one of the Assassin's Creed games now. I can't remember which one it is. I think it was, I think it was Revelations when they throw in a wave defense section. I just, I just couldn't be bothered to do it. It infuriates me. So, uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm not very good at them as well. So you know, before in there, in there before anyone else says that. But yeah, so you know, not a massive on me. So I, I couldn't really tell you anything about previous zombies. So. Yeah, no, it uh, it's not much to talk. There's loads of trailers out there. Obviously, we could sit here and cover all of them in depth for you, but that's not what the podcast is about. Yeah. Um, like you know, so it, it like I said, there's, it's nice to just type in Black Ops on YouTube, and you've got all the all the trailers there. Do give them a watch. I think they're pretty damn cool. Mm. But you know, they, they are like cool. they are cool. I'm here to tell you what I'm excited about, and what I'm excited about is mainly going to be the the mob of the Debbie map. Oh. Yeah. A lie, actually. Sorry, I'm a liar. It is going to be the Gladiator map as well. A melee only zombies map. If they can pull that off right, then a in men to them. I, I saw a couple of bits on that. That does look kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. I that Maybe you want to buy the game, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't go that far, but I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm excited for, for everyone who, who loves Call of Duty. I'm excited for them because I know uh, there's a good friend of ours who gets proper buzz out of um, Call of Duty, especially Black Ops. So he's he's like excited and I'm excited for him, really. But for myself, not not particularly. So Yeah, yeah no, actually. So I think that's where we're going to leave the, the Call of Duty kind of um, segment there. It's 13, 14, 15 minutes long, however it is long. Um, I think we can leave it there. Um, like I said, it, it was just our opinions, uh, our thoughts on what we think about the game. Yeah. Um, hopefully it lives up to the hype. I will probably buy it and I'll probably buy it Dan it for his birthday. Because um, you, you know what you get on your birthday presents you don't want. Um, <laughs> but yeah. You go next to um, a pack of socks. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and if we do end up getting it, we'll happily play Battle Royale our mode review. We'll probably do a video on it or two explaining why we're bad at it. But yeah. we'll see. We'll, we'll see. And anyway, right. this is the end of this segment, um, and our next segment is going to be Dan. Which one do you want to do next? Uh, probably go through uh, Battlefield Five. Okay, well we'll see you in a Battlefield Five segment. Okay. <laughs> right, cool. So we're moving on to Battlefield Five. Um, so everybody would have seen, hopefully by now, the information on Battlefield Five. We had the launch event a couple of days ago. The had a sort of an hour-long video on 
on the game, things that have changed slightly, things that have not, you know. And a pretty cool video actually. Um, if you've not seen the official reveal trailer, check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, but I think. You know, as as per the Call of Duty video, I think we'll start with the, some of the negativities surrounding it because I'd like to end on a high note. So we'll start with the negativities. And one of the things that I've sort of found that's annoyed me is the argument um, where it's not people are saying the game is not historically accurate because there are females in it. Now I don't want to go on for this for very long because it's a pretty boring subject, but just get over it. I mean, honestly, it's it, <laughs> no one cares if if it's if it's male or female or not, realistic or not. It's a computer game that we're going to settle that argument and park that there. I think because otherwise we've got a bit of a rant about how ridiculous that is. To be honest with you. Oh, so I'm um, like on it. <laughs> no, you're more than welcome. What do you think? Uh, I think yeah, get over it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, if if, if you're on, it's not it's a like Dan said. I can't really elaborate any more what Dan said. There is a woman in this game. Congratulations. <laughs> it's a computer game. Yeah. You've got realism. Don't play the game, because every time you die, you come back. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, exactly. That's exactly. How often do you see soldiers... You know, how often do we see, hear stories of soldiers running across minefields to, to attack enemies? They just, they just don't. Well, the odd crazy person, maybe, but, you know, generally, it doesn't happen. So, yeah, get over it. So, get over it. That's my opinion. <laughs> that's, um, that's, <laughs> yeah, it's rather, it's rather frustrating, because, actually, the game itself does look pretty cool. Um... There are some things from the reveal trailer. I won't really say much if you've not seen it because it is pretty cool. But it does. It looks very. It looks very smooth, very clear. Now, what doesn't? It's not very clear on the trailer itself. Is whether or not the the video in includes um, actual gameplay footage. It kind of looks like it does, but I'm not entirely convinced. It does look smooth, like very smooth, and slightly over the top, but more almost cinematic. Absolutely. Um, oh my god, did it again? Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> what I mean by that is, is like, it has all the points of it being a, uh, a gameplay trailer, such as it's got the, the HUD, it's got the point at the top, like the captured, not captured, but it just seems way too, uh, what's the word? Way too placed there, if that makes sense. Way too fake. Yeah, it, it looks, just looks like, a, it's like, a, it's like a video, doesn't it? It just looks like you're like watching a really cool video, and it does look good, to be fair. It does. Well, here's what me and Dan disagree. So Dan was an avid player of Borderlands. Uh, Borderlands, oh my god, of Battlefield One. My apologies. Yeah. Uh, um, and Dan really enjoyed the game. I dabbled in the game on Xbox One. Um, to me, I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really a Battlefield player. Um, a lot of you may say, "Ha, ah, right, he likes Call of Duty. He's not good at any games." You're <laughs> right, I'm not. <laughs> but what put me off Battlefield is when I yes, it was a beta. I know you're going to tell me it's a beta. When I played the beta. I, the tr the bullet drop in the game was just horrendous. And then when I played the actual game, I just felt like it was still there. To the point like where I'd shoot somebody in the head, but clearly the bullet would hit them. And it just made sure it was like a shoulder tap or something. And I'm there going, <laughs> oh, mate, I've shot you. You've now run off over this mountain, got a car and bugged off. I'm not going to see you for the rest of the game. <laughs> and I yeah. love the, the whole, you know, it's a massive scale battle, but just stop. <laughs> like... I I don't know. I think, uh, I think um, I would slightly disagree with you. There. I mean, as as previously mentioned, I mean, you know, it's become slightly more clear that you you prefer Call of Duty, I prefer Battlefield. But I think at the end of the day, they're, they're very different games. The fact that people compare them baffles me anyway. But you know, Battlefield is all about being large scale, whereas Call of Duty isn't. Call of Duty is all about fast pace. So you know, it's a little bit a little bit different. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call bullet drop on Battlefield games realistic but it's just different, it's just a different approach, I mean obviously we know bullets drop in real life so why not put it into and try to put it into a game but I do see, I can understand how people get frustrated with it because it's probably one of the only mainline games that does it I can't yeah. really think of many others that and, do and don't get me wrong, it's not that I, uh, I'm like, you know, I'm moaning that there's bullet drop altogether, like I'm a big big, uh, big fan of the Sniper Elite series um, and the, the World War 2 Sniper series I like the bullet drop when it works. When you've clearly, you've lined up your shot, you've shot your shot, and you know that bullet should clock them in the head, <laughs> you've aimed this, and it hits them in the shoulder, and you're there like, well, that's, you know, that's, that's great. I don't um, know, maybe, maybe this is you, who knows. But it, I, yeah, I, I, okay, I, I, okay, I, it was the better, <laughs> and I'll probably just give it a second chance. One thing I'll give credit to, to, to Battlefield, is the games look stunning. Mm. But what I'm worried about with this one, 
and the previous generation to this, this uh, keep trying to say Borderlands, this Battlefield, is it looks way too similar. It looks like it's going to be exactly the same game but with a different skin on it. That's yeah, it does. It does look quite similar, um, to be fair, um, than the, the Battlefield One, but. Again, it's only really some of the reveal stuff. So, it, it, whatever the final version looks like, it might it might be completely different for we know. To be honest with you, what they've shown might not be even remotely close to what they've done. Uh, um, are they, they talking about campaign with Battlefield Five? Yeah. So there is a there is a single player campaign. It's going to be very similar to um, what it was like in Battlefield One. Actually, we were saying earlier in the Call of Duty, I couldn't think of what they called it. It's um, war stories. So it's not like a um, you know, you're not following one person throughout the thing. You're doing different bits from different all the way around the world. So each of these stories sort of uh, un, the unrelated tales, and they all come together to form the narrative of of the story arc. And that's kind of how it's how it's done. So kind of like it was done before. So that's how they're doing it again. Um, they're also doing it a sort of um, a multiplayer sort of campaign as well. Um, well, not so much campaign. They're kind of doing. I think it's somewhat similar. It's not really that well explained, um, at least to me. I mean, I'm not the uh, the most observant sometimes, but it's, uh, from my understanding, it's a very similar way. Up to four player sort of <coughs> co-op, maybe missions, maybe not campaign as such. But when you compare it to how the campaign is for this game, it might be somewhat similar. I'm not actually sure. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I literally said it. Uh, two things I want to quick touch on. This one, this game comes out later or before Black Ops 4. I've just got the release date for it. It's actually October the 19th. Uh, if you haven't pre-ordered um, uh, about for 5, that's when you'll be able to play it on the Friday the 19th of October. And it's going to cost you around £54.99. <laughs> Depending on where you get it from. Um, well, that's 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 Amazon, so that's pretty good price for Amazon. They um, um, if you're American, it's going to cost you around sixty bucks. Yeah, they, um, they are doing a um, a different version of the game as well. So you've got deluxe editions, which comes with some extra perks. Um, you get some new skins, cosmetic sets, some special assignments um, for the classes. But yeah, it's mainly just cosmetic. Um, there's actually something quite cool that I do like about this game is that they're doing away with the premium passes. So the the add-on that sort of traditionally um, offers you sort of post-launch content, you know, we get new maps, new weapons and stuff. Um, for this, by the sounds of things, they're just going to say all additional maps and game modes will be free to owners of the base game. So when they come out, you just get them, like, you know, kind of how they should be in a weird way. Um, that's awesome. The only thing but, that conf the only thing that confuses well, me about that is, and I don't know necessarily that's a good thing. I mean, it is. It's great. It's a great thing. But the thing that worries me is that where where are they going to get their money in from? If you know what I mean? Uh, ah, like, loot like, boxes. Yeah, right? is it going to go down the loot box route? Um, uh, Battle uh, Battle One did it. Cosmetically, well, yeah, cosmetically. I think it was all cosmetic actually in the end. Um, I don't think there was any special weapons so maybe if there was it wasn't the best weapons in the game so they were like look i've i've got this it's slightly better than made of other again well with the, for example with the peel of bonus you get um you get a, uh, you get the first game trials on the 11th it comes out 19th black ops 4 comes out on the 12th of october um you get early access to the beta it includes five weapons for battlefield one that you can actually use in battlefield one right away hmm. Okay, a couple of things I want to mention is oh, if you buy it on Amazon, just after the game comes out, you should, if you've got Prime, you should get 20% discount on that game, according to IGN. Hmm. So wait for that to go live to so get 20% off the game. <laughs> uh, in terms of consoles, it's going to be on the three main consoles, isn't it? It's going to be, well, I say consoles, it's going to be two consoles on the PC, obviously. Mm, yeah. Uh, no talk about the Switch coming into it. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Imagine <laughs> playing Battlefield on the way, to get, on the way. <laughs> on the way, on the go. Yeah, <laughs> on, the, yeah on the way, like. <laughs> Me coming to where you live takes like five hours, so I just like get the train and play Battlefield with you the whole way. Like <laughs> that'd be sick. That'd be actually. I I don't know if Black Ops would do. See, Black Ops would be easier, um, purely because it's not it's graphically intense. But we talk about Black Ops too much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I was um, talking about Battlefield Five. Um, obviously, the whole woman thing we talked about. She's actually on the front of the case. Good for her. Well done. <laughs> um, actually, there was something I wanted to talk about with um, with Battlefield Five. Um, it was just it's kind of just its setting, really. It's obviously it's um, it's done for World War Two, and there was a lot of um, speculation that it may actually be Vietnam. 
Um, I was a little bit gutted that it wasn't actually. I think that would have been pretty cool. Um, but maybe next time we'll get a battle well, for Vietnam. You know, they, you know why they wouldn't do Vietnam, right? They can go on. Because we lost the war in Vietnam. <laughs> Yeah, but well, I don't see people making an American game where the Americans lost the war. Yeah, but they they change things. It's not really a real story, though. They yeah, just change things around. Metal, they? Uh, well, maybe. Look, they put a woman in this one, mate. Imagine Vietnam winning, the, like we winning the war against Vietnam. Uh, yeah, 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 maybe. Maybe, maybe. maybe they'll go mental. Who knows? Who knows? People would be up to with it. People complain about everything, so I wouldn't worry about it. Actually, um, actually but... there is um, there is actually a, um, just sorry back on topic. There is a quite a cool. Um, New thing they're doing with the the way you die in the multiplayer games, which is kind of weird. Um, so it's a cool thing. They've um, so once you've sort of like once you've been sort of killed, your camera zooms in on the soldier or vehicle, whatever that's killed you, and then you sort of go back to your own sort of soldier, and you can like see like you're covered in blood, and you start shouting out for a medic, but you can look around at the same time, and you can get an idea of what's going on around you. So if someone revives you, you can. Um, you know, it's, it's easier to, to see what's going on as opposed to one of the most annoying things actually about Battlefield, or actually any of the Battlefield games, once you died, you get a really awkward camera of yourself on the floor and then you think to yourself, oh, should I just wait here for a minute turns up? If it turns up, you know, there's a lot of people joking about that. But anyway, another thing altogether. But yeah, if the minute turns up, you spawn and then you get dropped again because there's someone stood right behind him. Whereas you can actually see that now and you can just kill yourself off, which is kind of cool because it's rather <laughs> infuriating. So people are moaning about the whole the whole one being on the game being unrealistic, and now you can do that with your kill camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and obviously this is, you know, it's just to cement the point that we think it's ridiculous. But yeah, I mean, as far as um, Battlefield goes, though, I've I've not really got much else to say. Me neither. Uh, like I said, I'm not really. I will buy it because Dan will buy it. Um, <laughs> so I will buy it because Dan will not let me not buy it. Uh, it's probably true. <laughs> Um, and, and yeah, and then we will go from there, and then we will play the game again. We will probably give you live streams of it. We'll probably give you games of it. We'll probably... yeah. We can be everything you want. Bye. So, what's our next topic, Tom? What are we talking about next, pal? Our next topic is going to be State of the K two and State how K2. people think that's a flop. Oh yeah, <laughs> cool. Because we start with negatives, right? We'll see you in the next part, which is going to be State of the K two. Hello, hello, and back on to our next topic, which is. State of Decay 2. Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. We were calling this on 25th, so it only came out like three days ago. Um, and as Dan liked to point out, let's start with the negatives and end on a high note. Um, and the reviews of this game are, I don't know, uh, not a mixed, good. A mixed bag, would you say? <laughs> absolutely. So <laughs> the, main, the main thing is people saying it's hella buggy. Um, obviously, it is a fairly new game, hmm. so you, you're going to get that. But some people say it's it's so buggy it's it's Was it unplayable. unplayable. Uh, hmm. um, so on some levels you're supposed to get followers with you to help your missions, but sometimes your followers wouldn't appear. Then you try to get a new one, say nope, you've already got one. And so what what what? what? Wait, no, I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and people are getting really annoyed by that. To me, I've never ever ever played State of Decay one, but the trailer for State of Decay two, the way they did it, the marketing on that game was insane. Yeah. I and I, I'm going to buy that game, and I if it's two player co op online, is it then? Um, it's it's it is yeah I believe it's two player co op online. If, um, I think it is. More so we'll, be, now. We'll, we'll probably be doing a let's play on it maybe maybe. It's it's good, so there's, a, there's a high possibility that may happen at some point. Yeah, um, um, it does look pretty cool. Um, while we're on the topic of negativities, um, something actually you pointed out to me literally about five minutes before we uh, recorded this was that it graphically doesn't look the best. No, um, it doesn't. And uh, I'm not really sure what engine they've used and any particular reasons why, but what I am aware of is that it's obviously it's a massive open game and there's lots and lots of you know moving objects on screen, lots of zombies and stuff, so it's probably partly to do with that. That you know the the open world versus the amount of enemies on screen, you know having really high end, um, you know engine with high end design, it might cause it to crash and be even buggier. But I'm not sure. Maybe we'll get a HD or a, a higher definition come out for it at some point in the future. But you know as it stands, that does seem to be a bit of a negative uh, sort of aspect of it. Yeah, uh, that's one thing I wasn't too keen on. But the, uh, other than the bugs and that, that's on the game, it to me it looks absolutely stunning. Yeah, I mean, um, there's always bugs on games when they come out, though, don't they? You know, you 
pretty much all of them nowadays because you know we you know, we we demand for games to be out quicker and they make games quicker than they ever have done in the past and you know they never never really ship perfectly so you know no they it's don't. Fine. and w- one thing that's got kind of got me on the bit of a who um ah side of things is the price point of this game is twenty four pounds and ninety nine uh if you do have xbox game pass you can get it for free that's my only um who ah about the game is why is it so cheap uh <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, yeah, I'm not entirely sure if I'm honest with you. Um, you know, it just, it just could be that they, you know, maybe maybe that clears up some of the issues that we've had. You know, maybe part of the reason why it's a not as, um, you know, not as good looking as some of the other new games that are around, and it might be to do with the fact that it's a little bit buggy. You know, sometimes they they'd rather get a game out, get you charge you less for it, and then all the revenue because they've sold. I think it was over a million copies in two days. So yeah. You know, now they've got a lot more money, they can work over the next what, six months making it even better. So, you know, it might be part of the reason why. Absolutely. I haven't looked too much into the game purely because I don't want to spoil it for myself because I'm going to play <laughs> it. Um, so I don't want to get any spoilers. I didn't really watch any. What I didn't want to watch any gameplay of it because, again, like I said, I don't want to ruin it for myself. Um, yeah, and that's the main thing. I think um, I'm very similar. But from you know what we've seen, you know, people were saying it's like, you know, it's like oh, it's like Left 4 Dead 3, you know. Or the other comparisons we've seen, it's like, you know, people say, oh, it's kind of got like the, the looty sort of systems and stuff similar to um, Dead by Daylight, but I honestly have not looked that much into it, so I couldn't give you an honest uh, an honest view on that. But um, And for the same reason why um, Tone hasn't, is for, for spoilers, it's one of those games that I think, I, I, I don't know, I just want to experience everything perfect for the first time without going oh this is when this is going to happen because we've seen it in a video somewhere or you know we've heard about it and that's something that we don't want to do but um some of the bits have seen does look really cool i just like the idea of you know jumping into a into a car driving down a road for a load of zombies that looks pretty wicked i love the sound of that it does it does and like i said we'll end up probably doing a series on it probably a bit later north because we've got such a factual schedule at the moment Mm. um but we will get around to it and we do want to play it absolutely um that's really all i've got to say about state of k is obviously the bad reviews it's still not putting me off to buy it no, uh, if you're no. one person that jumps into only really buys a game because of the reviews then you probably won't end up buying it but for the price point is that i would say everyone give it a go uh, if it's your type again don't miss out just because the reviews are bad oh uh, yeah um, that, that's actually a, a slight side topic just, um you know we touched it on the last couple of um, games we talked about, especially in the Call of Duty, is, was to sort of go on price points. You've got to remember, when a game's not 50 quid, you know, it's not going to be perfect. And, that, and no. just, just to point that out. <laughs> a better, a better <laughs> but, one for you is, even when a game is 50 quid, it's still ain't perfect. Well, yeah, well, yeah, that's safe and that. You know, we can give a little bit of leeway, can't we, surely? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. No. Um, yeah, I don't think I've got much else to say on it, other than the fact that I'm actually quite buzzing for it. It looks mint, and yeah, I'm well excited to get my hands around it. But that will wear, you know, as, as Tony said, we'll probably do a, a, you know, some videos on that moving forward at some point. But we are a bit packed up with a lot of stuff going on. Um, for the channel at the moment, so adding anything else to the schedule might just drown us. So yeah, that's, yeah, no. um, so, yeah that's that's where we're going to leave the state. To, uh, oh my god, state of decay topic, uh, state of decay two topic there. Um, our next topic is going to be um, no man sky controversy that's going on uh, mm. at the moment. Um, yeah. So we'll be right back with that topic then. Yep, awesome. No worries. Right, um, we're back and we're talking about, this time around, um, a game that is probably, at some point in its life, might actually turn out to be my favourite game ever. Um, and I've kind of pushed on Tony to let me talk about this one. But it's, uh, as Fruzzi said, it's going to be No Man's Sky. Um, and the reason why we're bringing this up over a year later now is because of the newest update that's happening. Um, so if you've not heard... Um, about the what they call the next update, not it's the next next update. That's what they called it. Um, N dash E dash T. So yeah, basically, from what we understand, it's gonna be the tying up of what the game should have been when it was shipped. We think, in theory. So if those of you who've not don't know, I'm sure everybody does by now, is that when all the hype about No Man's Sky, lots of people. I mean, pretty much. Everybody I knew, apart from like two people, bought this game. 
and we all played it for about an hour um, because it was as, as big as an ocean but about as shallow as a puddle so there was it looked pretty it was massive procedurally generated world uh, universe which is great but it doesn't go anywhere there's nothing interesting every planet's exactly the same but from the sounds of it from what we understand is that the new update that's coming through is going to change a lot of that stuff um, you know the planet's going to be slightly different add a bit more variety it's a bit more interesting um, adding some new vehicles in and probably the most important thing actually one thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was the fact that they're actually going to add in multiplayer which was supposed to be there on launch um, and it just wasn't so you know we know that they was like oh yeah yeah you'll be able to bump into other people and then it was disproven in like the second day of it being out that there's two people in the same place at the same time couldn't see each other um, so so yeah that was a bit of a disappointment to be honest with you but you know, I uh, I am really excited for this, um, but I don't know what it's going to look like. I mean, Tone, do you have any thoughts on it at all? <laughs> um, as a person who's never bought No Man's Sky, um, I only ever read into the conspiracy on it. Um, I would never to end up buying it because Dan has a way with words, <laughs> as always. If it, from what Dan describes it to me, it does sound like a like he said, like a, a, an ocean of a game. And it, I'd rather jump into the game when it is an ocean of a game full of oceans instead of a puddle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and for what we do, the content we do on this channel, I think if it is and this this N dash E dash that next update that's coming out basically, I'm not saying that bloody word like that. <laughs> um, if it, if this does make it more plain, it does make it amazing. Then it's going to be a cracker for our channel, I think. Um, most definitely. But like I said, I don't know too much about the game. I don't know what you do on the game. All I know is it's fast, fastly open world. Um, and Yeah, you know. I mean, to be fair, though, there's not really... Um, there was never really a massive... You know, when you say you don't know what to do in the game, there never really was a huge objective. I mean, it was, you know, journey to the centre of the universe was the, the whole point of it. But um, I know they did the most recent update last summer I think it was, it was the Atlas Rises update which has added a bit more structure to the game so we had things like base building and there's about 30 hours more con story content they put in as well as some more planetary variety but yeah we'll see, we'll see what it's like um, don't want to go on about this too much um, it was kind of just something that I really wanted to talk about um, because I'm like I said already, it's probably the most exciting game that I was, well Probably my favourite game that I've never really actually played. Hopefully, in the future, <laughs> it will be. Because <laughs> I love space and flying around and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. So, yeah. Um, oh, shit, I'll definitely I'll definitely give it a shot. Um, provided that it all works, we will look into that properly. Because I don't want to get caught out by a game that... To be fair, it wasn't in 25 quid. But I don't want to buy a game that um, doesn't prove to be anything interesting. Or, you know, spend a lot of time on the game as anything not going to be that interesting. So I won't make you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Well, I end up making you buy Black Ops Four. Anywho, <laughs> uh, so we'll probably wrap up this um, this update here. There's not too much to talk about. Obviously, the main thing is this, this next update that's coming out. Yeah, we don't uh, actually know exactly when it's due either. Um, I don't think it's uh, it's supposed to be at some point in this year. But I don't actually, I think it'll probably be some sort of like a summer release because most people have school then, and yeah, that's when they get the most audience. Mm. Pardon me. Are you alright? Are we keeping you up, Tom? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> right. Nah, I, love, I love doing podcasts, boys and girls. Sorry. <laughs> right. I'm a fan of them. Okay. Right. So, yeah, that's it on that, really. Um, next thing I want to talk about, just a very quick roundup, is just uh, just on ourselves, really. Um, so, yeah, um, just what's happened with the channel and where we are now. Absolutely. Right. Um, see right, you in so the next topic. See you next topic. Hello, hello, welcome back to the last topic. Uh, again, we always tend to do this last topic on the podcast, talk about ourselves uh, and where we're going and what we're doing. Um, so if you haven't seen since the last podcast, we have now hit 1K subs and over 4,000 yeah, so, hours of watch time. Yeah, so I want to just thank really everybody for you know doing everything, you know, watching, talking to us, um, sharing this, you know, all the rest of it. You know, we, you know this, there's a lot to thank everybody for, to be honest with you. So I want to firstly just really honestly just start with that, just a you know, big thank you to all of you. Um, and we look forward to you know seeing all your rest of your friends and stuff, um, viewing it and seeing what we've got to share really. Um, yeah, m most definitely. One thing I do want to touch on, two things I want to touch on, I do apologise. One, obviously, we said this at the beginning of the video and I'll say it again, thank you Phil for the thumbnail and for the banner you're making us. Again, it's much appreciated, he's doing it off his own time. Yes. He, 
is just a good friend of Dan. Secondly, we were supposed to have a guest this, this week. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it with us. Mm -hmm. uh, he will be on next podcast next week. Is a surprise guest. Another small YouTuber like ourselves. Yeah. Uh, a personal friend of mine. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's really pretty much it. We'll talk about ourselves. Obviously, thank you um, for hitting that. Yeah. Uh, lots more stuff um, to come. There is there is a lot more stuff to come. Um, you know, we've got uh, it's a new video, actually a new series starting on Wednesday. We... Um, We've spoken about it on several occasions, but we are actually coming out on Wednesdays now. So we are um, One of Warcraft um, Road to One Ten Story Mode starts on Wednesday, uh, be nine a.m. Um, English time because it always stories is. We're not we pick nine a.m. because it's a just you know no real reason. But yeah, so that's when it's going to start. Um, so yeah, if you get to enjoy the shenanigans that's going on in that one, um, please jump in and watch. Um, the other thing actually we want to just mention is that um, you know again just everyone who wants to talk to us um, please just mention stuff in the comments um, one of the comments that uh, I just thought I'd mention is that we me and Tone um, I'm we me and Tone met near um, Bath and Bristol that sort of area um, we lived in the same sort of town um, for the whoever asked that question I can't remember the guy's name now I feel very bad for that um, but I've moved to York now so we're the other side of the country really but yeah um, I'm not living in the middle of nowhere in the woods so you cannot find me even if you try <laughs> <laughs> for all that good out there um, yeah. yeah so um, yeah so we're going to um, try and throw in the odd extra video um, throughout the weeks as well so you know we're going to um, and as we've previously mentioned on many occasions, we want to work with other people, so we might do the odd special episode of certain things. Um, it might be us playing games with somebody else, another YouTuber or streamer, or it might be just just something completely, you know, game related, but probably completely different. Um, you know, we have a few ideas, but we're not entirely sure yet. Um, there's also actually somebody else on a comment um, asked about how difficult it is to get back into WoW. Um, on that podcast, I think we covered most of that, but not that difficult. If you're honest, if you haven't played for ages, then if you've not played for a really, really long time, it's very similar to how it was back in the day. If you've played somewhere from Wrath of the Lich King onwards, then it's a little bit trickier, but not massively. So nothing changes me yes. in that <laughs> in that massive it's, it's, way. It's harder. You all see a lot of things that you've probably never seen before, like Loom. So uh, you all see low level people with insanely high gear. I recently found out because I was just running a, a demon hunter that the new meta is to make a level 101 character cap him at level 101 so you don't ever get him to 110 uh, and get him the best gear you can 900 plus and then run low level dungeons to farm people that was pretty entertaining for me um, but if you ever want to information about well we're not the best people in the world at well but we do not <laughs> a fair bit yeah yeah so, so um, hit us up on twitter man just yeah um and one last thing actually um one of a one last comment i think i wanted to touch on um because we ask every video actually i think every video we ask somebody to recommend um games for us and somebody did about portal 2 and actually quite a good shout really it never actually crossed my mind so it wouldn't be a terrible game for us to actually try and do um so yeah thank you for that <laughs> is it bad, is it bad? i do apologize for i can't remember any of the comment <laughs> oh well that's fine that's fine right, well again <laughs> This has obviously been the Joystick Podcast. Um, obviously, I was one of the hosts, Tony. And I'm Dan. And uh, as, as per usual, please like, rate, and subscribe. Um, I don't know if we always say like, rate. I don't, know. I don't know where rate comes from. It's like fair. share and subscribe. Like it's share. my fault. I do all the time. Well, that's probably why. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, we will see you Monday for the next episode of the Borderlands Let's Play. Um, between now and then, enjoy the content, and uh, we'll see your faces later. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Cheers, bye.